Severe weather can affect the UK, and when it does, here at the Met Office, we are responsible for issuing warnings to warn of the potential for impacts. Whether it's from intense rain, strong winds, heavy snow, or another weather type, these warnings are designed to let people, businesses, governments, and emergency responders know what weather is in store and what the impacts may be. Now, let's get out of the rain. This is the Met Office warning symbol, used when we issue a warning. You might have seen it before on TV, a weather app, or on social media. Perhaps you followed the guidance provided with it. Our warnings give valuable advice on staying safe in different weather conditions. But have you ever wondered how we decide when to issue a weather warning? And how we decide what colour to use? Let's explore this and what it means for you. We'll also cover what actions you can take if a warning is issued and how to ensure you don't miss an alert for your area. Why do we issue warnings? Severe weather can disrupt our daily lives, and we issue warnings when this is forecast and has the potential to bring impacts to the UK. Our aim is to keep everyone informed so that individuals like you and me, but also businesses, emergency responders and governments, can prepare for those conditions and stay safe. We issue weather warnings for rain, wind, snow, fog, thunderstorms and lightning, as well as extreme heat. We'll explore these in more detail later. When do we issue warnings? We issue weather warnings up to seven days in advance. Each warning is carefully considered by our expert meteorologists who evaluate the potential for issues from the weather by taking various factors into account. A sudden snowstorm during rush hour in a city will have greater impacts than similar weather overnight in a less populated area. Factors considered include the time of day the weather is likely to hit, the time of year and if the weather is unusual for that season, and how prepared the region is for such conditions. We also consider if there are any outdoor events happening or plans in the affected area, or if there are any other sensitivities specific to that region. For example, recent heavy rainfall in an area could mean the ground is already saturated, making it more susceptible to further impacts from additional wet weather. All these factors are taken into consideration and help us determine how impactful the weather could be. How do we categorise warnings? The colour of the warning, yellow, amber or red, depends on both the likelihood and the severity of possible impacts. While the colour code helps you get an idea of the weather situation, the warning levels can cover a range of situations, so it's important to check the details of each warning for your area. Each warning has a further detail section. Here you will find a matrix, like this. Checking which box has been ticked will tell you what level of impacts might occur and how likely they are. This is particularly important for yellow and amber warnings, which may mean there's a high likelihood of low impacts, or that there's a potential for high impacts, but it's not especially likely. A red warning, however, will always mean the strongest impacts and the highest likelihood on the scale. What are the impacts associated with different weather types? Let's dive deeper into what the different impacts are that severe weather can have on us and our daily lives. This will help you better understand what each box in the matrix could mean. First of all, on a more general level, we talk of low impacts. When disruption to our day-to-day -day activities may be minimal, but the weather might cause some inconvenience for us. For example, it could take you a bit longer to get to work in the morning due to fog or heavy rain, and you would need to allow some extra time for your commute. In case of thunderstorms, it could, for example, mean that there is some disruption to the power in your home, like power cuts. Medium impacts, however, could cause considerable inconvenience, but this may only be for a short period of time. For example, you may come across a fallen tree on the road due to strong winds and must find an alternative route. When it's icy, it could mean some injuries from slips and falls, or in case of lightning, it could mean damage to buildings from lightning strikes. Lastly, we talk about high impacts. When severe weather can cause a major disruption to daily life, potentially lasting for several days. For example, significant snowfall could isolate your community or widespread flooding of homes and businesses could cause danger to life from fast flowing water due to heavy and prolonged rain. Extreme heat is another weather type that we've started warning for in recent years as it can significantly impact our lives. In this case, we issue only amber and red warnings indicating medium to high impacts. 
We talk of medium impacts when the temperatures cause adverse health effects to vulnerable people and changes in working practices and routines may be necessary. High impacts would be when temperatures are so high the adverse health effects are experienced by many of us, not just those vulnerable to heat, and they can lead to serious illness or danger to life. Also, significantly more people could be visiting coastal areas, lakes and rivers, and that could lead to an increased risk of water safety incidents. As a reminder, the level of impact is not the only factor that makes the decision about a weather warning being issued or not. The level of impacts needs to be considered with the likelihood of these occurring, which is indicated by this scale. So we might have the possibility of high impacts, like blown off roofs due to severe gales, but it might not be very certain if these gales will actually hit that area in their full strength. So this wouldn't lead to a red warning, but would be either a yellow or amber. We could, on the other hand, be looking at the potential for low impacts, like some difficult driving conditions due to fog and a bit of spray on the roads. If these are very likely to happen, this would also warrant a yellow warning. What should you do when a warning is issued? The first step would be to check your local forecast and see if the warning is affecting your area and its validity time. Next, you may want to consider the impact of the weather on your family, your community, your own property and plans. The actions you may want to take before and during the warning will be different depending on the weather warning issued and the level of impacts. With both rain and thunderstorm warnings, flooding is possible. Check if your property could be at risk, and if so, consider preparing a flood plan and emergency food kit. It's not safe to drive, walk, or swim through flood water. Avoid it where possible, and if you are affected by fast flowing or deep water, call 999 and wait for help. Before very strong winds arrive, if you can do safely, secure any loose items outside your home, such as bins, garden furniture, trampolines, and fences. Be aware of large waves around coastal routes, and being outside in very high winds makes you vulnerable to injury. Lots of severe weather can cause travel disruption. You may need to amend or even cancel journeys if driving conditions are dangerous. Keep up to date with bus and train timetables for delays or cancellations, and if you must travel, then allow extra time for your journey. Not needing to rush can reduce the risk of an accident, especially in snowy or icy conditions, and sticking to main routes is a good idea as they may be less slippery. Using lower revs, higher gears, and trying to avoid slamming on the brakes can help you drive more safely too. Before driving in fog, make sure you know where your fog light switch is. Use fog lights when visibility drops below 100 meters, roughly the length of a football pitch. Being outside in lightning can be very dangerous. If caught out in the open, try and find a safe enclosed shelter, such as a car. Do not shelter under or near trees or other structures, which could be struck by lightning. During extreme heat, you can reduce the likelihood of feeling unwell. Drink plenty of fluids, keep out of the sun, and avoid any exercise between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. when the sun is strongest. And close curtains in rooms that face the sun. If you are going out, take water with you. Stay in the shade, wear sunscreen, and a wide brim hat. Both heavy rain and snow may lead to communities being cut off, and power outages are possible in severe weather as well. Prepare for this by making sure you have enough food as well as torches, batteries, and other essential items. Help to protect vulnerable people that you know, including older people, those with underlying health conditions, and those who live alone. They may need extra support. Take a look at our Weather Ready advice that, as the name suggests, will help you be prepared for the weather ahead. This provides lots more information from our partners, such as RAC and the Energy Networks Association to help you minimize the impacts of severe weather. How can you receive our warnings? Make sure you stay up to date with our Met Office weather warnings, either by downloading our weather app or signing up to our email alerts on our webpage. Check out our social media channels where we post weather updates 24-7, 365 days a year. You could also help keep everyone informed by sharing Met Office warnings with friends and family, or on your social media channels, so yourself and your community and stay one step ahead of the possible impacts from severe weather. Also note that weather warnings may be updated as the event develops, so always check you have the latest information. By staying informed and prepared, we can all support each other and navigate the challenges of severe weather together. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, you may be interested in watching our explainer from Alex Deacon around weather misinformation. It's all about helping you make sure you're receiving an accurate forecast rather than always trusting those 
online headlines you might see. And remember to subscribe so you don't miss our latest forecast videos too.